Hello, and thank you for joining us today. Um, we have Julio Ligoria here with us today from class of 2006. After graduating from Palmer Trinity, Julio attended um, George Mason University where he received his BA in International Crisis Analysis and Resolution. Um, Julio is currently the Director of Special Projects at Valsera Communication, and he manages a project roster in, wide in a wide range of sectors, including the public sector. Um, today, Julio is going to talk to us about the importance of voting and um, how to be an informed voter. Thank you, Julio, for being with us. Absolutely. Super, super happy to be here. Great. Um, so, Julio, start us off by telling us um, why it's so important to register and exercise your right to vote. And, you know, we keep hearing, does my vote even count? Right. Yeah, I, I get that all the time. I, I get questions from, you know, my niece and nephew, like, you know, does, does voting does voting really matter? I was like, yes, it's, it's, it's incredibly important. You know, people usually, the selling point that people usually give you is uh, people sacrificed a lot to to allow you the opportunity to vote to give you the right to vote um, and that usually you know works and people think you know what I, I have to do well by them um, but now we're in a we're in a really different time and you know there's a decline in empathic concern and and historical literacy and and people really don't understand what that means People hear it and they study it in school, but they really can't contextualize it with, you know, with, with why it matters today. So, you know, the, the way I approach in, in telling somebody, you know, why you should register to vote and why you should vote is um, by showing them how it affects them directly. And what affects them directly more than anything is who they choose to be their local leaders. Your local leaders uh, decide how, many, how much you pay in property taxes, they decide how much or how little money the police or firefighters get, um, the quality of education that you get. So many things that affect your daily life more, arguably, than who's president or, or, or senator, right? They do have in much larger proportions an effect on your life, but, but local leadership is where I say focus your energies. Okay. Great. So what are the things that people can vote on? So uh, you know you're gonna get a you're gonna get a long list of things uh, on your ballot, but don't let that intimidate you. You have things like referendums, you have constitutional or charter amendments, um, you have obviously a president, congresswoman, senator, uh, you have statewide races, you got uh, mayors, commissioners, so many different things that you, that you have to look into. But uh, if you do your research, uh, and, and you know that's something that is critically important before you even vote. Um, you sh you'll be okay. But those are some of the things that, that are listed uh, on the ballot and those are some of the things that you can look on. Great. Um, so what is the best way for people to research candidates or issues mm -hmm. that are on their ballot and what information is most important to look up? Uh, so I mentioned earlier uh, referendums, issues, or amendments, right? So uh, this, uh, this year we have, I believe, nine amendments. Those are the ones that are very nebulous uh, in the sense that they're you know politicians have a lot of double speak when they when they talk to them talk about them they, they are very long-winded there's a lot of confusion a lot of people don't really know uh, you know what the amendment is even about and they, they rely they, they overestimate how good they are at reading between the lines and understanding the text but the text is written in a way first you have a limit on how many how many words you can use and then it is worded in a way that is rather confusing so uh, you know, the first thing you want to do is read the amendment then you want to go to independent sources and there are plenty of them and we'll, we'll provide links to all these sites uh, towards the end um, but you want you want to see what independent sources are saying about these amendments then you want to look at who's funding it because to get an amendment on the ballot it takes a lot of a lot of money and it takes a lot of coordination with a lot of people. Uh, it's you know you have to collect hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of signatures uh, to be able to, to reach a threshold <clears throat> to, to get into uh, on the ballot, to get a constitutional amendment on the ballot. And then you have to promote it, which means advertising dollars, right? So this can end up costing you millions of dollars to get an amendment on the ballot. So my suggestion is to follow the money. Look 
at the group or the individual that's promoting it, <clears throat> look at the, um, at the political committee account. Um, again, we'll provide links to so that you can actually research it and see who is uh, supporting, who is monetarily supporting this cause. That will tell you part of the story. Uh, the other story is, you know, who is this amendment benefiting? Who, what group of people are the ones that uh, will end up maybe disenfranchised or uh, potentially hurt by the amendment? And then make your decision. Is this something that you want to vote on? Vote yes or vote no on? Um, and, you know, you can also look at your elected leaders. You can listen to some uh, public affairs radio shows, which there are plenty here in South Florida, and see what those influencers and those people are saying about the amendments. Usually when there are this number of amendments, a lot of people are talking about them because they want to inform you um, of what it means. One of the best resources I have seen, if you listen to radio, is, uh, is NPR, WLRN. They have, they have a lot of resources online and they have shows that dedicate basically the entire show to see what's on the ballot and, and decipher it. Uh, when it comes to candidates, the process is very similar, um, although a little, a little different as well. Um, you know, you want to, first thing you want to do is go to their campaign page, right? You'll see what they're about, you'll see their history, and then you go to their social media pages, uh, you want to search uh, what coverage they've been getting in the media, um, go back, if they're, if they're a current elected leader and they're going up for re-election, look at their voting record, look at the budgets that they have voted in favor of. Um, what kind of legislation have they put forward? Uh, those kinds of things you, you, you really want to pay attention to. And also, look at their campaign accounts. Look at what political action committees are backing them and who is giving money. Um, there, there's a, there are some candidates that uh, you know, uh, receive money only from individuals like you and I um, and don't take any money from any big interests and big interests, you know, other corp big large corporations, um, and there are others that take money from both. Um, and so, you know, the same as budgets, I feel uh, the donations that you receive say a lot about where your um, where your interests are. Um, and I, I like to say budgets are moral documents. They show a government's um, uh, where a government stands and, and where they want to spend their money, their priority. The same goes for how a candidate spends their money, right? Um, so all those things put together will give you a very good picture of the candidate or the issue, what's it about, and you will become, you know, much more informed. Um, so what are some of the important positions within a campaign and how do they come together to earn our vote? Uh, so many so many people at work in a campaign, you know. Uh, I would say personally, aside from the candidate, um, I think the, the position of volunteer is one of the most important positions to fill uh, early on. Why? Uh, the volunteer is an extension of the candidate, they're an extension of the campaign. Um, they allow the campaign and the candidate to be in multiple players at once. You know, you've probably seen people with their, with their shirts, with different candidates' names on it, with their banners and, and different things. Um, you know, in a county as big as ours, or I mean really in a state as, as, as big as Florida, the candidate can only cover so much ground, so they have to uh, uh, rely on volunteers and surrogates to campaign for them. So that's that's number one. Number two, you got campaign manager, you have uh, public relations team, you have uh, advertising, fundraising, you have um, uh, ground operations, uh, you have research, political directors, all these different positions that come together to make a well-oiled machine. Um, you know, a very important one, obviously, is fundraising. We've talked a little bit about how important it is to follow the money, right? What is that money usually used for, right? You're talking about millions of dollars that are raised in large races. What is that money used for? Well, mostly, it's used to pay for the operation. You know, the, the campaigns cost money. So you, you have to pay for volunteers, you have to pay for staff, you have to pay um, for advertising advisors, right, public relations, you know, you have different agencies, sometimes you have one, two agencies in different places, advertising as well, that is, I think, arguably one of the costliest things to do is, is advertise. I'm sure everyone here has received mailers, they've seen ads on TV nonstop, they heard on the radio, I mean, 
and I apologize. I'm, I'm part of the. I'm part of the. I, I, I've been placing for a lot of people, and and I can tell you firsthand, it's 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 a lot. And uh, uh, you know, sometimes they're very positive. Sometimes they can be very negative. And that is the reason why it's so important, so important, to do your research. You know. Uh, and the campaign manager is also an incredibly critical position. Obviously, he makes everything, he or she, sorry, makes everything uh, uh, work, right? Make sure that every department, every person is communicating has the same information at the same time. Uh, obviously, research department, political directors, all these different people uh, make sure that their candidate has the most accurate, up-to-date information on any given issue on any given day. Awesome. Um, so how important is it for the voter to get into the weeds with their research? Whew, man, it is, uh, like I said, it is super, super important. Um, you can't take uh, for granted the tools that you have at your disposal, and you can't take a candidate's word for what they're saying. At the end of the day, you know, like what a candidate is trying to do is present the best version of themselves to you. Uh, and, you know, I'm not saying that candidates are liars, but there is a positive spin on everything. So you want to research and really get into the weeds, um, right? Case in point, uh, if you live, I don't know, let's say um, in, in Kendall, and there is a, um, a, commissioner, uh, a commissioner's district that, you know, engulfs where you, where you work and live, um, you want to know, okay, what is that person's priority? You go into their fundraising uh, account and you go and, and, you, and you look up, you know, how many developers are giving money to this person? Because for me, it's important that they don't build that project that they're trying to build in front of my house because it's going to block my view or it's going to create traffic. You see on there that the developer that's trying to develop that project in front of your house has given tens of thousands of dollars to your candidate, to this candidate. You want to know why, right? Um, but that, that can give you an idea, okay, this person gave me a million dollars, I am going to try and pass their item once it gets to the agenda of the commission, right? I'm not saying that that's what happens uh, or that's what the candidate is thinking, but from time to time, it's what happens. Um, so, you know, it's, it's very, very important to become informed. And also you want to know if they're, you know, who they surround themselves with. You want to see who their uh, staffers are. You want to see who um, their surrogates are, who is endorsing them. Um, you know, you can, you can go to your local, you can look, look up your local unions, let's say a firefighters union, and you can see who they are endorsing or who they have been um, uh, stumping for, right? Uh, you, want, you want to look at... Uh, United Teachers of Data is, is one organization that's um, that's made up of teachers. It's a union, and then they have what's called a slate card. And, I, and, and a word of caution to slate cards, right? A slate card is basically a list. It's um, uh, it's a postcard with a list of candidates on either side and, and things that are going to be on the on the ballot. And uh, it usually lists the the people and the amendments that they're supporting, right? But it doesn't give you the full picture. Doesn't, it doesn't tell you, oh, um, you know, uh, it's only X person on the ballot for school board. Usually there's two or three other people and you want, and, and there might be from the same party, but they don't tell you that because they're only endorsing one person. So it gives you a good idea on what subjects and what items are on the, uh, on the ballot. It doesn't give you the full picture. So when you get that in the mail, um, look at it and say okay cool and then go online to the government website and take look at a sample ballot just print out a sample ballot and you'll see everyone who's on there and every amendment and the wording for everything and do your research right don't just take the word of an organization or, or your party as to who to vote for because at the end of the day you know there are other interests involved and the, they might not align with your own all right, big topic, misinformation. <laughs> um, we know this has been around for a long time, but why is it so prevalent now? Oh, yeah, and perfect, perfect segue from, from the last topic. I mean, getting into the weeds is super important. Um, so misinformation, yes, it has existed for a very long time in the form of propaganda, right? We've seen it in, in recent history and in ancient history, you know, it's, it's, it's been everywhere. But now, with the advent of social media, 
Ooh, man, it has propagated like wildfire, and it is very difficult to take a, to, to take the reins on this information. I mean, Facebook, for example, they, they've tried, they're trying, but you know they're still not getting it right. They've they've done everything in their power to get a hold of it, and it just isn't working. Um, granted, they make a profit off of um, people getting outraged, right? Because it's ad dollars, ad money. So there is there is some interest there to not stop it right away, but um, you know that's topic for another day. Uh, tw Twitter, you know, they, they, they've they've almost um, gotten the formula right, but they're still not there. So social media really is this is a very important piece. That's why it's been been able to spread so far and wide without really much uh, of a of a, um, of a of an obstacle. Um, so how can one identify political bias in, the, in a news article or in an outlet's reporting? Um, so there, there are different things that you can look for. Uh, mostly, uh, and this is a lot easier said than done, but focus on what's not said, what's not reported in the story. Um, you know, especially when it's, when it's uh, a TV, TV reporting. Uh, you also want to focus on the words that they use. Uh, you want to focus on the headlines. Uh, or the the Chiron. it's uh, it's this this part at the bottom of, of your screen that tells you you know what they're talking about or the subject that they're talking about. You want to see, you want to focus on the words that they're using, um, right? Uh, do they do they qualify their statements uh, with something that may enrage you or cause you to question your beliefs? Um, those those are, those are some of the things that you can really look at when when it comes to TV reporting. Uh, online, it's much easier, uh, in, in my opinion, uh, when you go and read an article because if it's, you know, same thing, right? The title, do they use all caps? Do they overuse punctuation marks? Um, is anything misspelled? Uh, you know, it, do they present the topic in a way that causes you to have an emotional reaction? Um, is it a news source? Well, basics is, is it a news source that's, that's reliable? Is it someone that you've heard of from before? Or is it something that you've never heard from before? Um, uh, you know, those, those are some of the ways that you can look into, uh, look into a story and say, okay, is there bias here? There's also a very, very, very good and reliable uh, source out there that tells you exactly where a news outlet lands in the political spectrum. Based on the reporting and, and their bias, it's called it's called Ad Fonts Media, and they have a um, an interactive chart that tells you exactly where um, where these outlets, both TV and, and print, uh, are in the political spectrum based on on the reporting and how reliable they actually are. It's it's really something else. It's it's very very useful. Well, that's great. Um, okay, so what process would you suggest people use to not fall victim of Fake news. So there, there, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do out there, um, but I would recommend uh, a method that I've been using for a long time, which is basically um, uh, I call it RAVE, right? Uh, research, analyze, internalize, and verify. There's an other optional step there, which is to clarify. Um, but a lot of people, you know, they don't want to get into this back and forth with someone online or even in person. So that's that's optional, but is. It's, a, it's, it's an important one because you don't want to leave misinformation out there without at least a breadcrumb for someone else who's researching it to find. Um, so the, the very first step there, research, right? Uh, or sorry, read. You want to read, uh, you want to do one of two things. You either want to read the uh, article in its entirety and very carefully, or do what's called lateral reading. Um, you know, you'll take an article uh, that, that, that says something and you're like, mm, this doesn't sound very right. Go into Google, copy and paste the title and see who else is reporting on it. Or copy and paste, uh, you know, the first two lines or just the general idea of what's being reported and see if any reliable news sources like the Associated Press or the Miami Herald or New York Times are reporting on the same thing. Mm -hmm. If none of those pop up and it's all a bunch of um, you know, media outlets that you've never heard of, chances are this is fake news. Um, then you want to uh, analyze. If you decide to read the entire article, analyze line by line, 
what's the intention, what's the author's intention, right? What is the reason behind it? And look for these excessive punctuation marks. Look at, you know, the wording, how they're qualifying their sentences. Another one is that it's important is to internalize. After you've done reading everything, you want to sit down and, and, and sort of take a step back and say, okay, what was my initial reaction to this story? Um, did I feel angry? Did I feel like it questioned my beliefs? Did it feel like it affirmed what I believe? Um, how did I feel? Because usually these articles are very successful at getting you really angry. It's like, how is this possible? It's like, right? So you want to internalize it. Um, and then you want to uh, uh, verify, right? Uh, go back and look at what you have and try to do another round of research and look at things that you haven't seen before. Go online, go to forums, be very careful with that, but usually Reddit is a good place to see if something's fake. Um, you also want to use um, reliable sources um, like the Pointer Institute. Uh, the Pointer Institute, Pointer with a Y, um, they have a, uh, uh, a partnership with several other institutes that analyze and verify fake news. And, um, you know, uh, the most, I think the most, um, uh, the most known that comes out of the Pointer Institute, the most known organization is Snopes.com. Mm -hmm. Everybody should use Snopes, always. I mean, they, they are incredible and very fast. At, at you know at looking it up right you can just go to Snopes and you and they have a search text and you say you know XYZ is this true or not and it'll tell you if it's there or not uh, and if it's fake or not um, all right great so Julio uh, what are some of the takeaways from all the information that we've heard today so uh, I think before people even um, consider researching their candidates I, I need everybody to go and, and vote um, this is an incredibly important uh, time in our lives, and uh, you know, not voting is is not an option. Uh, if you haven't registered to vote, the deadline was um, uh, October fifth. You know, maybe next time. But if you are registered to vote, you know, vote by mail, request your absentee ballot, vote early, whatever it is that you prefer to do, um, you can. Uh, October twenty uh, fourth is the deadline. To send in your uh, to request your absentee ballot, uh, you have to make sure that your absentee ballot is in by November 3rd at 7 p.m. We live in Miami, so I am asking you to please send it in early. Don't procrastinate. Um, you know, the second you get your your absentee ballot, if that's the way you choose to, to vote, send it in the same day that you fill it out. Put it in the mail the same day. Don't procrastinate. Um, and then you can vote early starting October 12th through November 2nd, uh, in person if, you, if, you, if that's what you choose to do. I always recommend people to, to vote early um, because there's not, there's not a lot of people, there's not a lot of lines, November 3rd is crazy, so vote early and, and bring friends and family with you. Um, as far as misinformation, you know, just make sure that before you post anything, before you even uh, consider you know, uh, retweeting or, or posting or commenting. Number one, if you want to get into the weeds with somebody, make sure you know the information and you are confident uh, that you can take pushback. Second, make sure that you research how does it make you feel? What is this information about? Is it fake news? Is it not fake news? Use all the tools at your availability, at your disposal that I will provide you with um, and just become informed. Don't rely on other people or don't rely on organizations or anybody else to tell you who to vote for. Your vote is yours. That's how you express your voice and your desire and what you want to see uh, in your community and in the country. So just make sure that you are informed and you research. Um, and those are, those are basically the, the main takeaways that, that I want people to, to, to Awesome. Know. Thank you. Thank you, Julio. You've been great. Thank you for tuning in, and um, we'll catch you at the next Masterclass.